dedicate it to each and every one of you who appreciate a great glass of wine. You know what I mean? It's Monday. Let's raise a glass to the beginning of another week. It's time to unscrew, uncork, or saber a bottle. And let's begin exploring the wine glass. Today, I am sitting down with some other wine writers, and we are discussing social media and wine. It's like a double-edged sword. Social media is so important in our society today. Many people don't watch the news anymore or read the newspaper. They get their information from social media. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But when it comes to writing about wine and trying to share a story of a winery on social media, what is the best avenue to take? How do you determine which of the many social media sites you should focus on? How do brands determine which, dare I say the word, influencer, they choose to share their story? Is our society just scrolling and tapping their way through life? Or are they reading and comprehending what is on their phones? We get down to the good, the bad, and the ugly of using social media in the wine world. Hey everybody, I'm Lori Budd, a UC Davis winemaking program, someday service, champagne specialist, and WSET level two graduate. You can find Exploring the Wine Glass on all the socials, as well as your favorite podcast catchers. If you haven't subscribed yet, now's the perfect time to swipe, subscribe, rate, and review. I promise I'll never tell you what to drink, but I'll always share what's in my glass. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Wine Writers Wrap Up. We are on a roll. I think we are three for three for the last three months, so we are doing good. And today's topic uh, is one that I'm pretty excited about, and there it can go in so many directions. And I must once again thank Mr. Michael Kelly for submitting this topic, uh, because I honestly hadn't thought about it. Uh, and as soon as I read it, I was like, yeah, it's a great topic. Why haven't we done this before? So the topic is social media and wine. So I kind of have dubbed it the good, the bad, and the ugly because I do think there's good stuff, there is some bad stuff, and then we've all seen some really ugly stuff. So before we get into the conversation, though, I'm going to give you guys a chance to introduce yourselves. So right now, Deb, you're big screen for me, so you go first. I am Debbie Giacondo. I am known as the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. I'm a wine blogger, wine writer. I'm author of Tapping the Hudson Valley, and I am a restaurant owner in North Wildwood, New Jersey, um, at Trio North Wildwood, and um, I'm a, uh, a champagne uh, specialist, important champagne, and I think that's probably about it. Okay. <laughs> but you did, you did forget you just won an award. Trio North Wildwood just won an yeah. award, right? I did. Yes, we did. We won a Bronze Award for the best restaurant. So, in in uh, Atlantic County. Michael, how about you? Uh, I'm uh, Michael Kelly. I write uh, my own website, uh, HTTPS uh, California Wines and Wineries. Uh, I'm putting on the third annual now International Cab Franc celebration, and uh, I'm um, actually studying uh, rosé all day for a major. <laughs> Test, <laughs> which is all tongue and cheek. Maria, <laughs> hi, hi everybody. I'm Maria Ferraro Beardsley from Wine and Cheese Friday. Uh, we write about wines, cheeses, and places where you can find them. Um, I am currently in Montana. That's usually the question. Still here, second month. Uh, new walls, new place, but still Billings, Montana. Um, and uh, if you're curious about a wine or a cheese that is from here, that was our most recent entry. Um, so check it out. Awesome. Awesome. And I am your host, Lori. Uh, my husband and I own Dracina Wines in Paso Robles. And I am also the person behind Exploring the Wine Glass. And I am, let's see if I can remember now, Champagne Specialist, WSET Level 2, uh, Somme Day Service, and just recently, Cote de Rhone Specialist. 
So the big question, everybody, before we get into the conversation is what are we drinking? So do we have other than water in our glass tonight? All right, Maria, what do you got there? Um, I've got a Malbec that I opened on Tuesday uh, when I was doing a chat about wines of Argentina. So although I'm not usually a Malbec person, that's what I could find here in Montana. So here we go. Very nice, very nice. Deb, what about you? I actually was out at happy hour and I was drinking a Wente Chardonnay and now I'm drinking Icelandic water. All right, Wente Chardonnay is never a bad thing. Never a bad thing. And Michael, how about you? Uh, I'm, Scotch? I'm, I'm drinking a nice 2021 apple cider. Oh, you Ooh. fooled me with the color. You fooled yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I am drinking Castoro Cellars. So I am drinking Paso tonight. And the reason why I am drinking Paso tonight is because I am very, very happy to be uh, hosting this uh, month's wine pairing weekend chat, which will take place on Saturday. And it is Paso wine. So... You know, I have a few Paso wines in my house. So um, that is what we are drinking. So this is a Chardonnay. Apple cider, water, Malbec, Chardonnay. Raise the glass. Let's do a slancha. 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 Cheers. All right. Let's get to this topic here. <coughs> Social media in the wine world. So, Michael, I'm going to go to you first because you were the one who presented the topic. When you suggested it, what did you have in your head of why you suggested it and what direction did you think it was going to take? Okay. So, well, let me start uh, with that. I, I get very frustrated with when you post things and, you know, you usually have a tagline and then you have the link on it. And nobody ever pushes the link or reads <laughs> the story. They just simply go and say, and in the story you're saying, you know, it's aged 24 months in, you know, French oak, blah, blah, blah. And then they go, how, how long is it aged? You know, and I go, read the story. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I just, you know, and then, they, and then people would say, well, gee, how much... Sometimes you don't put what does it cost. So now I'm very consciously putting down what is their, the list price at the winery on their website. And they go, and then inevitably, any story I do, 10 to 15 people write back, what's the price? <laughs> you know, and I go, did you read the story in capitals? You know, it's like I'm yelling at these little kids. And so I think, but rather than pick out these individuals who do this stuff, I think the bigger issue is that there is this mass movement afoot from going from websites and blogs with, with content and, and what I call deta details and information to the tic TikTok and Instagram, and we're now getting everything in a pill form where you can't you know, they want to just take one little pill, swallow it, and say, oh, I know everything about that particular wine, whether it's a, a Tempranillo or a Malbec or whatever, and not spend the time understanding what you're trying to convey to them by taking your time and writing information out. So I started doing a little bit of more of a the deeper dive into what I call the, this whole social media. And it's kind of like, uh, if, has anybody read uh, Future Shock? Did you guys ever read Future Shock? No. Okay. So it's probably one of the best books, probably one of the ten most influential books I've ever read in my life. And uh, it was written back in 1970. But it talks about how the, how the, the amount of information has just expanded exponentially and now people can't keep up with all the information. And that's even before the internet was out in 1970, okay? Now you add the internet on top of that, and there's some, I mean, it's, it's four or 500 pages, but it's a great, great read. But I had, a, I had one quote from him, and it talks about how it, the whole society is moving to a throwaway society and, and a transitory way, and there's just too much cognitive overstimulation 
stimulation. And people can't digest as much information that's out there, be it on social media, TikTok, you know, whatever. So they're going for the simplest, easiest way. And they're taking, you know, like a little baby food and they can't handle the meat and potatoes. No offense, Lori. Okay. <laughs> for that. So, um, so I had a couple of quotes here that I think it kind of expresses my my thought. Uh, there is a, a book that I, again, it, I, a great book called Mr. Blue, written by Miles Conley back in 1928. It says the printed word has ruined the intellect and has given fools and fiends the same power as wise men and saints. It has made a jumble of the mind, a burlesque of reason. No one any longer knows how to think clearly and cognitively to a finish. And I wow. think, so I think there's a lot behind that comment. And then I'm going to give you a couple of quotes and I'm going to tie in my own, my own thought on it. Uh, another guy, Oz Guinness, uh, the option now is not one-dimensional uniformity, but multi-dimensional over-choice. Uh, you have to think about that. I'll, re I'll repeat it. The option now is not one-dimensional uniformity, but multi-dimensional over-choice. And so people are just flooded with so much information, it's hard for them to comprehend. And that was uh, Oz Guinness probably in 1971, I think. And then... Uh, Thorin Kierkegaard in 1847, he says, Reflections must not so much move, mollify, reassure, persuade, as waken and provoke men and sharpen thought. Well, you can't provoke and sharpen thought with a TikTok three-second video of somebody. It just doesn't make sense to me. And then Instagram, uh, Twitter, TikTok uh, is... My thought is that it's the opium for the one-dimensional, non-thinking masses. While a picture may be worth a thousand words, it's simply given. A, it's the response is simply to give a thumbs up or down without comprehension through investigation of intent or reasonableness. Uh, and to end it, there was a quote by a guy, Helford Lucock, once said, "We are going to have eyes the size of cantaloupes." and the brains the size of peas. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie said she agrees with a lot of that. Yeah. When you, when you look at it, yeah. 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 And what's scary is you look at those dates, and each time it was a new media. Um, right. I'm not sure about the written word um, one, yeah. But, yeah. but it was new media to them. As new media comes along, there's more coming in, and less that people are absorbing. Um, but that is good. I'm going to go, let's start off with TikTok. Okay, let's start off with TikTok. So who is, who is on TikTok? Is anybody on TikTok? Yeah, I'm on TikTok, but I'm not. Okay, same with me. I am on TikTok. I don't have the, the stuff to be active. I'm not sitting there. I have no means to, like, do all that shit. Right. Right. I, I, I don't get, I don't get TikTok. I don't, I don't get it. Um, so I'm active. I mean, I'm, I'm not active. I'm on it because a long, long time ago I was told whatever anything new comes out, claim your name so that nobody else takes it. So I go and I claim my name. So Dracina Wines is on TikTok, um, but I think I did one. Uh, what is it called? The talk, one thing. And that was it. And I, I followed a couple of people. And within two days, I was exhausted watching these people do these things. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and now we're kind of just still watching TikTok because now you take your TikTok and you move it over to, to Instagram. So well, let, let's go with TikTok. Have we viewed TikTok? What are our thoughts of TikTok? I can say... I've never even gone on it. I have a niece who is going to be 16 this year, and I know that she's on it, and she's that I see it, right? her, like, in the corner of my eye, like, all, oh, I'm, like, making all these faces, and she says she's making TikTok videos, but I have no account. I've never been on it. I don't know anything about it. So 
And I, one of the reasons I was so curious about tonight's discussion is because I know that we had another one where we talked about like millennials and wine and trends in wine and whatever. None, none of us are going to go out and announce our ages right now, but we know that none of us are the TikTok <laughs> generation. So, I mean, I think that this, this discussion from the four of us is just going to be really interesting because... You know, none of us are millennials. None of us are really like hip, trendy <laughs> social media masters. Like it, probably, Michael's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, maybe. All right, maybe that was the wrong statement. But you know what I'm getting at. So does, does TikTok have a certain generation? Because I see all kinds of stuff on TikTok. Oh well, I don't know. Am I on TikTok? No. Have I done stuff on TikTok? Yeah, but not. Not like other people because I'm just that's just not me. I when when I looked at TikTok, to me it was first of all I found out about TikTok from my students, and because when they were supposed to be doing one thing, they're sitting there doing their dance um, for TikTok, and it seems that it started as dancing. Everybody did dances, but now it's a whole bunch of different stuff. And my question is, right, so it is like a three-second or a five-second thing, I think, right? So how does that sell wine? So that, that's what I want to talk about is like, like can you see, and this might be the most difficult um, avenue to go because none of us are on TikTok, but how, how does wine and TikTok come together? What, what, we, what we see or what we think of TikTok and our impression of wine, is there, is there a confluence there? Is there something I, that... I mean, I think, like you said, with the dances, now that I'm thinking about it, I have seen some snippets that say, like, TikTok in the corner. So although I'm not seeing it from TikTok, I am seeing it from other places. Right. But it seems like it's a lot of, like, to Michael's point, it's a lot of fast-moving stuff. So, sure, like, in the idea of you need to expose people to your brand eight times, ten times, whatever, it is another exposure to it. Is that where the people are that are going to be buying your brand? I don't know, but, I mean, it's probably not a problem, like, to just make a quick video clip across you know scanning across the bottle or whatever and then having it on there and then the bottle dances or whatever like I mean I don't know I would see how it, it could catch people's eye but I don't know I mean it, you know what is the other value I think that in a lot of the social media avenues that's the value is that people see the see the bottle see the brand see the person and then relate it to you know, oh, I've heard of this before. Maybe I need to look into it. I don't know. Right. So it's just brand getting getting your name in front of their eyes. And if they're somewhere, they go, oh, I've seen that label before or something like that. Um, the problem that I find with those uh, three second or five second things, which you know, okay, that was that Maria, that was an awesome concept, right? Here's a bottle, make the bottle dance. Da, da, da. Right. That doesn't take me five seconds to do. That's going to take me like two hours to do. <laughs> right. You know, to like get that yeah. video to do that. And I don't know how much time these people have on TikTok. Right. You know, are they are they legit just taking that little bit of time to do that? Are they so awesome in front of the camera that they're doing that? Or is that five hours of their life, of which I don't have five hours of my life to make a five-second right. video? Right. Um, but right. no, I don't. I really, honestly, don't. Kind of like the social distortion movie. We don't know. I don't know. To me, like I, I can't even do reels on on Instagram. So if we jump over to Instagram, because we all are familiar with Instagram, we jump over to Instagram. Those reels, like it takes me an hour if I try to do a reel. You know, because, oh, you video, oh, and then the dog is barking, or you're doing this, and then, you know, what song do you want to go, and you're thinking of what song you want, and all of these things come in there, and I, I just think the people who are really good at that, the reels, have a team that are doing it for them, 
I mm. don't think it's a small business where it's me doing every single thing behind the scenes. But so my question is, how many people watch the reels? I have to admit, I do watch the reels. I'll sit there I and I'll get into a zone and I'll start watching the the reels. Um, you know, but there's certain ones like they pop up. I, I get a lot of dog reels. I'll watch a dog running around and jumping all over the place for like, you know, <laughs> when I'm in my little zone. I'll do that forever. Um, but I don't see reels of wines. So that's well, I, don't, I have a question then. So mm -hmm. I'm on Instagram. I think a lot of us are on Instagram. But I like it for the post aspect. Like looking at the profile and seeing all of the pictures of the wine bottles all in a row. That's what I like about Instagram. And lately I have um, a new handle and it's for my travel blog. And, um, and it's blue bag, red bag because it's our two suitcases. So I've been <laughs> trying some stuff out for the travel stuff in addition to the wine stuff. And I've done a few stories recently for the travel one, and I actually was just talking to Neil about it, and I was like, Neil, all right, you watch stories on Instagram. I don't, because I'm like, eh, I'm bored. I don't really care if I want to see all these videos. So I don't watch the stories, but here I am trying to write the story or make the story and assemble it and whatever. And so are the stories and the reels the same thing, or is the reels something else? So, um, just, Maria, I, is everybody else getting an echo with, with everybody, or Maria? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I do hear it right now, yeah. Okay. Um, I hear it. Yeah. Um, so, reels are short clips. Reels are TikToks. Okay. Okay, so the idea, I think, I think you can do... Five or seven, se I, I don't know the time, but like when you push the button, I can record this one thing and then let go of the button and then record another thing. And then, so that's how, that's how the people like, here I am looking all horrible. I just got out of the shower, right? And then I flip my hair over and ah, I flip my hair back and oh, I'm all beautiful. Okay. <laughs> um, those are the reels. They're shorter. Okay. 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 Stories are 15 second segments. Right. Um, but you can add the segments together. So right. you can make it, you know, and that's where if you're looking at Instagram stories up on the top, right. there's those, you know, there's I if it's only one, it's a long bar. If there's lots, then there's lots of little bars. Um, so they are different, but the real they go into separate areas. Right. But both stories and reels you can choose to have it go into your, um, into whatever they call your... Um, the highlights or whatever? Well, you yeah. can choose highlights, but you can actually have it show up also in your feed, like, oh, you know, okay. all of that. But you can say yes or no to that. You can say, you know, teaser in, in the whatever they call that. There's a special name for it. Um, so they, they are different, you know, okay. real stories. And then there's IGTV, um, right. you know, I've which is done. So I do do a lot of IGTV. Uh, so whenever, oh, whenever I get a wine sample, uh, I try to at least introduce that wine to my followers because I may taste the wine, or there might be something that I don't, you know, I'm not going to write about. But at mm. least I got the wine in front of them. And the other thing is it gives, it, it gives that company, it gives that, it gives that winery, you know, at least some exposure. They always get some exposure. So that's an IGTV for me. So, Laurie, on this, I, I've not seen one of your IGTVs. So is it, are you showing a, a bottle of wine? I talk. I I talk about the winery. It's a very brief, like two minute, two minute um, thing about about the winery, and then it goes into my um, whatever this is called the you know that post thing. Um, so I'm trying to look for one. So if you look at somebody's feed. Uh, okay, so it gets stored as an IGTV, but I tell it to to show a post, to show a post. 
Oh, so okay. uh -huh. if somebody sees this, they can click on it, and then it's like the first 10 seconds. The first 10 seconds is the the video, and then you have to click on it, and it will take you to my IGTV. A little longer format. But so, do we like? Do, what do we like about Instagram? Go ahead, Jim. People click through and watch the IGTV. Are there analytics on that? There are analytics. If you're a business, if you're a business um, account on Instagram, you can get analytics on everything. So yeah, so it's got 322 and 91 actual interactions, and then it tells it breaks it down into how many people that interacted with it. Uh, were my followers versus not my followers. It actually shows you how much of it it was viewed. So they watched, you know, you can see if they watched five seconds of it, ten right. seconds of it, you know, 100% of it, you can see all that. But you have to be a business account yeah. on Instagram in order for that to to work. And then it does, it does tell you... Um, if you got any followers because of it and things like that. And what's the business? What's the business uh, cost on that? No, as long you don't. There is no charge it's, for it. Yeah. Well, you said it's you just signed up. Set up the account, I think. Okay. Right. When you set up the account, and you can change it at any time. If you just set up an Instagram account, you are automatically a personal account. And then if you go into the settings, you can say change to business. Mm -hmm. And then once you change the business, you get the analytics, you get and you get other other things that you can that you can see. So right. if you are trying to promote something, if you're trying to sell something, whatever, then I I, I don't see a negative to being a business. Well, and I think one of the other things too with the when you're declared as a business or you're a business account, I think in that case. Um, you can have clickable links, but it was yes. something like you had to have ten thousand store also, or something. You had to like have some other aspect of it. You couldn't just have it click to your website. Which for me, that was why initially I thought Instagram was like, oh well, everybody's making such a big deal about it. But if what you want to do is promote the stuff on your website, like Michael said at the beginning, like which direction are you going? Are you doing Instagram because you want to do Instagram or are you doing Instagram because you want to drive traffic to the website? And in that case, if you can't put a link, then, you know, it seems counterproductive at that point because it's like, well, nobody's going to go to my site because they can't find the link, right. which so, I mean, is in the profile, but I mean, go, for, go from there. I'm sure you guys have thoughts on it, that it, too. It, it's not a live link. It's just you have to type in HTTPS, blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, that right. Goes, goes on to, to saying, you know, is it Instagram that we're looking for? Is it Facebook we're looking for? Um, we have a blog. Is that what we're looking for? And now, a word from our sponsor. Did you know that Dracina Wines has a wine club? We named it the Chalk Club. Draco is on our label, but Vegas was getting a bit jealous, so we decided he deserved to be our wine club spokesdog. In Las Vegas, betting chalk means that you are betting on all of the favorites, and we're gambling that once you taste our wines, we will become one of your favorite wineries. The club is simple, yet a bit different than most. We don't ask for a lot of commitment like others do. Choose between three tiers. The Sweet 16, where you'll receive three bottles twice a year and get 25% off all orders. Sign up for the Elite 8 and get 30% off all orders and receive four bottles twice a year. Or make it to the Final Four and receive six bottles twice a year, as well as receiving 35% off all purchases. All tiers receive discounted shipping, are customizable, and are eligible for unlimited referral bonuses. Add $15 to your bank for each person you refer. Head to www.dracinawines.com or the link in the show notes to find out all the Chalk Club has to offer and to sign up. We've stocked the odds so that you can get our award-winning wines without breaking the bank. Right, so I think that's that's the main point right there, Debbie, is what 
what is your goal as an individual or as a business? What is your right. goal? Well, not so much what the goal is, but where are the people that are following you? But I think the more time, I think the more time you spend on any thing, you're going to get more interactions. But so, like, so I have two Instagram accounts, right? And so my Dracita Wines account, which I wish was the bigger one, right? I have over 10,000 followers on that. So I do have the clickable links. I do right. have what used to be swipe up, but now is no longer swipe up. It's now a sticker. Um, so I can send people to my website. I can send people to whatever URL I want them to go to. And it does work. People do click and people, because I can see where they click. So it does work. But I have 10,600, you know, to over 10,000 followers and I get about 100 likes or whatever per picture, um, sometimes 40. And it blows my mind. I have no idea what makes the difference. Where Exploring right, yeah. the Wine Glass has 8,000 plus followers, but I get over 200 likes and, in, you know, more interaction, more comments with Exploring the Wine Glass. I don't know what makes the difference. So that's my next question is what makes you stop for a picture on Instagram? Because, you know, as opposed to just swiping likes, like, 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 mm -hmm. what so, makes you stop and actually look at a photo? So, so is the question, are they liking the content or are they liking the photo? I don't think you really know. Mm -hmm. You don't, but that's a great question. So what do you th I think Michael is asking, what do you think? Do you think they're liking yeah. the photo, which is an excellent question, Michael. Are they liking right. the photo or are they liking... I think they just like the photo. They don't, they don't care. Nobody's looking at the link. Nobody's reading it. Nobody's and reading it. Like I said, that's why it's annoying when you can't even put the link to the entry because people are like, Oh, cool. Maria posted another picture of cheese. I'm like, yeah, but I wrote all about that cheese also. It's not just like a, like I want it to be a nice picture. And sure, when you look at the profile, they're all nice pictures. Like any of us, they're all nice pictures. But it's like, yeah, but if we're doing all this time writing about it also, like somebody, please, like, and I think, like I said, for me, that's why you want the traffic to the website because then if you have Google Analytics or whatever, you can see where the traffic came from and that people are mm -hmm. actually reading it. I mean, I've been doing Wine and Cheese Friday eight years now and I'm like, how, how do I ever know if anybody is even reading anything? <laughs> and that drives me crazy. And I don't, you know, I'm going to self-proclaim right now. I don't like social media. I get mad when I have to go on there and like things <laughs> and post things. And I'm like, no, I'm just trying to get people to read my stuff because if nobody's reading it, then why am I writing it? So. Bingo. We have a winner. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, the, the point of this whole thing and why this is frustrating, and it sounds like you're as frustrated as I am at times, right. is that you're, you, you're taking hours. I mean, some stories take an hour. Some stories take me days, depending yeah. on the amount of time and effort yeah. and all this. And yet... All you get is a thumbs up, right. and then yeah. and then they if they do make a comment, it's the most idiotic comment because <laughs> it's already in the story. Yeah, right. the information that they're asking, and it just exactly. like why? So you know that those people are just simply liking the picture, mm -hmm. and then there's other people I know I, I could swear that they just gave me a thumbs up because they like the picture, and then they make a comment in detail about the text or a question that was in the story and I'm like, hallelujah, I got one person that today to read it. So, <laughs> right. so, I, so I think when I remember when I first got onto Instagram, I was the old fart in my building and my colleague who shares my office with me is, I mean, I taught her. So that's how much younger she is, right? And she was like, you got to get on Instagram. And I was like, no, no, no. And then she was like, get on Instagram. So when that happened, I remember it was about the pictures. There were no, like, you didn't write anything underneath the picture of the Instagram. It was like, you know, if I took a picture of a sunset, oh, pretty sunset. That was what you wrote. And then the key was the hashtags. That was mm -hmm. the big deal with the hashtags. But now 
it's like writing a mini blog. It is right. a mini blog. Yeah. It is no longer just here's the picture. So it is frustrating that mm -hmm. it takes me almost an hour to do an Instagram post for, mm -hmm. you know, for, for Dracaena Wines, that's one thing, right? I'm trying to promote my wine without shoving it in your face. That's really my objective with Dracaena Wines. With Exploring the Wine Glass, I'm trying to promote other wines, other wineries or whatever. And I have to say it's really frustrating that you, I take the wine, you sent me a sample. So we all receive samples. Right? We all receive samples. How frustrated do you get when you take the time to write a legit blog or that hour it takes to do an Instagram post? You've got just the right picture. And then the winery that sent you the sample doesn't even acknowledge that <laughs> it's there. Oh, it pisses me off. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, I, would say I don't want to be so, so cruel, cruel, but when you tag them, they could at least give you a thumbs up. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, at least an acknowledgement. I mean, I see it from both sides. If anybody tags me in a post, I am on it as Dracaena Wines, right? Mm -hmm. As Dracaena Wines, if you take the time to post a picture of my bottle or, you know, whatever it is, you're drinking my wine, I am all over that. Mm -hmm. I am cross promoting that. I am doing I am acknowledging it and thanking them for sharing it and I am shoving that picture anywhere else, right? It does go into my story. It goes into my feed. It goes into everywhere. I don't understand the purpose of a winery sending out samples and then not acknowledging right. when when it hap when it's posted. Right. So, when I when I get samples and I stagger, try to stagger them out during the course of doing a story on them. One of the things that I do is I send it back to either the PR person or the media person, or I send it to the owners, or I send it to the winemaker, and I say, hey, I just posted this thing. It got posted mm -hmm. to 65 plus blogs. It got posted to my social media. It's on my website, and I give them the link. And unbeknownst to me, when I was doing, as I'm sending out invites to Tab Franck, uh, celebration. Uh, I got on some of these websites and looked at their their blog information, and my blog showed up there on about ten or fifteen of these guys. But they never told me that they were posting my excerpt huh? on their blog. Now there's another thirty or so that I do know that they posted their my story on their blog site. You know, at the at the but. The, the the communication is not crisp. It's not a, a, a positive connection on both sides. Do we like? I mean, just the general concept. Do we like Instagram? Do we do we see a positive? So is inst. All right, let's go back to TikTok. Is that the good, the bad, or the ugly? <laughs> Maria, good, bad, or ugly? I'm not weighing in because I've never used it. <laughs> I, I have a few things on TikTok. Most of the stuff that I've done on TikTok is just like savoring and stuff. I'm not a dancer. I'm not <laughs> any of that. So I would well, have to say. Dancer. You're a dancer. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'd have to say, you know, a no on TikTok. Okay. All right. Let's go to Instagram. Good, bad, or ugly. I mean, Neutral. I have to say. I think I you need a you need Maria, what? go ahead. I was going to say, I have to say, I like looking at Instagram. I like seeing the wine pictures and reading the wine stories of all the people that I'm following and reading about it. But I agree that I don't want to spend an hour writing that whole thing and then have nobody look at it or nobody comment <laughs> on it. So, I mean, I guess it's a mid-ground, I'd say, for me on Instagram. Okay. Deb, good, bad, or ugly Instagram? I think it's, it's good. I think that it's a place that you need a presence on mm -hmm. because people either they're scrolling through the, the feed or they're going through the stories to see what you're up against, what you're doing. Michael, good, bad, or ugly? Yeah, I call it fairly neutral. I mean, it, it's <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's like a, a pretty girl that you can't date. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> 
it's kind of like you see a picture of a nice piece of, you know, a, a meal or a wine or something, you go, oh, that looks really good, but then there's nothing behind it. You know what I mean? There's just It, it just kind of falls. It, I personally, I do like Instagram. Um, it gives me the ability to do which, a lot shorter than a blog. You can't write a blog about every wine that you drink, right? So this allows you to, <laughs> okay, everybody but Michael can't write a blog about every wine they drink, right? Um, so this gives you the ability to post the picture and talk about the winery a bit um, and give the information that you want to give. So mm -hmm. I, I'm a, I like Instagram. I like Instagram. It's frustrating, and it's annoying that you can't talk to anybody in Instagram. When you know, I, a few years ago, I went into Instagram jail for absolutely no reason whatsoever. <laughs> um, they they said they they said because my uh, pictures were against, or they they said I was using. Um, I was getting too many likes. I was liking too many photos, but oh. I was physically the person liking the uh, yeah. like liking it. Um, so that's very frustrating when you go into Instagram jail. There's no human being to talk to. So <laughs> I, I'm going to go with it's good. Um, but my next question with Instagram, and then we'll go on to uh, another topic. What is with and I, I'm going to say it outright. What is with the boobs and the wine? Oh my God. Today, I was just looking at someone's thing, and Neil had his headphones on when I know he can't hear me, and I'm sitting there just like, ah, ah, and I mean, that drives me so crazy, and he knows it drives me crazy, and I'm like, look, I don't care. Like, three of us are females. We don't need to be, like, leaning over our wine glass. It's, not, it's just not necessary, but people do it, and they get a lot of likes, and then it drives me crazy. <laughs> Michael, are you going to buy a wine because there's cleavage in the image? I absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> no, no. Uh, in fact, you know, the guy that has—I you know, know he's one of your great followers, Lori. Uh, Stephen, uh, was it, was it McConnell, McConnell, McConnell down in mm -hmm. Santa yeah. Barbara? Yeah. You know, he he is on a tirade about this all the time. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. He, yeah, he—that's his. That's his. Number one thing he cannot stand, and and it's it's kind of bothers it bothers me when I'm working on putting content, and I get you know a couple of hundred likes or something on a story, and some gal and I'll call her a bimbo. Sorry, ladies, but I'm just gonna call her a bimbo. You know, is showing some cleavage with a glass, and she gets two thousand, four thousand likes, and she doesn't, and the the bottle is. Is not even shown. It's just a glass, and she goes, "Oh, this Pinot is one of the best I've ever had." And there, you, well, who's you know? I mean, it, there's no, <laughs> there, there's no story, but it sells. And you know, and again, if you look at advertising, and I guess a lot of this is simply advertising. Sex you know, sells. sex sells. Absolutely. Yep. And so, uh, it, it it's very frustrating because it's as a guy. I'm not going to be holding up a glass of wine on my my hairy chest. You know, I don't think that's going to get a whole lot of likes. And you know, and if that's what it takes to get thousands of likes, you know, I'm right. I'm I'm doing something wrong here. You know. Right. And and I think that's part of why Instagram was trying to take away the likes and take away that stuff is I I, I just don't understand from a business well from just from a business aspect, I don't understand how that sells. I don't understand if I'm going to send a sample to somebody, and we are stingy with samples because we are so small, right? We can't afford to send out samples. I want somebody who knows wine, mm -hmm. and I want somebody who can appreciate the wine. And I'm not saying that these people who just expose themselves on social media don't know wine, but they're present. It, it's like the old school of playing the dumb blonde, right? If if I'm if I'm dumb, boys will like me more, type thing, right? It's kind of like I'm not saying they don't know wine, but they're not presenting it. They're right. not presenting themselves as as knowledgeable. And I guess maybe that has part of it to do with me because 
I'm always, I, I feel that, it, you know, my, my career has gone, you know, up, down, whatever, and, right, so I go from microbiology and two master's degrees in science to teaching phys ed because that's what I like to do, right? I enjoy phys ed, but then I get the dumb jock, mm -hmm. right? And it's very frustrating to be thrown into the dumb jock category when I am not a, I'm a jock, but I'm not a dumb jock, right? Right. So I guess part of it is I, it's very frustrating to see these women who are just mm -hmm. throwing themselves out there. And if they know something, if they then show that you know something. Don't be, don't sh act stupid. But that's mm -hmm. my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and I mean, I think that one of the things about it and, when I, the first time I heard this, I thought like, oh my God, I have to commit that to memory. But I was looking into social media and trying to learn more about it. And I was in like some webinar or whatever. And they used the term thumb stopping moment. And that was when you're scrolling through, what makes you stop and look at something? And Leave it. if you see <laughs> boobs, yeah, you're going to stop. Like, and I mean, it's just annoying because like we said, those of us that are trying to spend all this time writing everything, but all the people are seeing are the pictures, and so they don't care. Like, they're like, ooh, what's that? Ooh, shiny. Like, I mean, right. it's just <laughs> annoying. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah, I gets, mean, yeah, you have to yeah, figure yeah. out what, what the thumb-stopping moment is, I guess. And I was just like, okay, well, now I'm annoyed that I know that term, but it's so appropriate. Like, yeah. And you can't, yeah. and, and, and if you're concerned with it as a guy, it's even it, it's. I mean, I'm just on the wrong side of the equation. Mm -hmm. I, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if, if you know, ever, you could show other stuff, Michael. Well, yes, <laughs> well, but I have to find it. That number one. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but number two, you know, the reality is, it's a no win. I can't come out against that as a guy because mm -hmm. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. Chop, chopped up in pieces. Right. You can't come out, you can't go out and call them bimbos for doing this because then I'm going to be a sexist and everything else. But, you know, you can't, but there's really no content and there's nothing to to re retort back to them saying, hey, I, you know, interesting wine, what do you know about this wine? Or, you know, I mean, I would love to have a conversation with one of these people that do this. <laughs> that they go, well, it's white or it's red. And worst case, they might say it's pink, you know. But, <laughs> but um, I mean, I just don't understand. It would be a very interesting conversation, I think, to have with. And there's about two dozen of these ladies that are out there doing this. And I don't know what what their goal, their end goal is, their game plan. I think their end game is to get free wine is, and free trips. I think that's what their end game is. But yeah. who knows? They may, that's what I'm saying, they may be educated in wine, but they're just not showing that they're educated in wine. They're not, mm -hmm. you know. So anyway, so our last, our last, well, there is Facebook um, and Twitter. Uh, so let, let's go to Twitter for a, for a brief moment. Um, who cut their teeth on social media? Uh, I guess probably most people cut their teeth on Facebook, right? And social media? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Are we still on Facebook? Do we spend time on Facebook? You know, yes. I, I went on my, my Google Analytics for like three minutes before I got on this chat because I had meant to do it and then I was like, oh no, I, I have three minutes so I can look. And the thing that I always find really weird is that on my Google Analytics, people that click my Facebook link get to my website more than Pinterest or Twitter. My Facebook okay. numbers are always the biggest draw to the website. And I don't feel like that when I'm in Facebook, I don't feel like it looks that way. Because on Facebook, I'll feel like I get like three likes on something, and then on Twitter, I'll get like 12 likes. And I'm like, okay, so it seems like Twitter, Twitter is, is my 
thing that draws people to my website, and Twitter is my one that is the biggest one. But then when I see that the actual traffic itself comes from Facebook and not from Twitter, that always surprises me because I feel like I do Facebook just because, okay, I'll do Facebook also, but I want to do Twitter. So, I mean, I know you said choose one or the other, but that's kind of my running mental argument between the two of them. Yeah. I kind of feel like you have to do both because you have to, like when you do the Instagram post, you have to put it onto Facebook and you have to do the Twitter because I, I, I'm not sure where the audience actually is today. You know, are, are they on Instagram? Are they on Twitter? Are they on Facebook? But that's what Maria is saying is her, she, she actually understands Google Analytics. Um, I, I attempted to learn Google Analytics at the Google Academy, and I ended up cheating by Googling the answers to their tests. So that shows you how, <laughs> how well I did. Um, so I don't, I don't understand Google Analytics, but that's, that's what we need. You know, so you're seeing that Facebook is your best, your best place, right. even though it might not look like it by the numbers on by that at social the numbers media. On. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So people, people might be, you know, like on Instagram, they're liking your photo, but they're not doing anything. On Twitter, they're liking that post, but they're not doing anything. On Facebook, they're not bothering to click the thumbs up, but they're clicking your link, and that's the important thing. Right. It's really not about the numbers. It's about, right. it's about who goes right. to your site. Right. Exactly. Right. And Michael, you were, you were like, yes, you are on Facebook. You... Are you on Facebook just posting your posts, your blogs to the to those those groups, or are you are you legit on Facebook and you you know you're following friends and you're yeah. commenting and doing all that stuff? Yeah. So my first thing when I write a story, I put I post it on the website, and then the link goes on to my Facebook page where I've got you know forty five hundred people on, on Facebook, and then it goes on to the, Calif then I have a blog on Facebook, California Wines and Winery, which is another 3,500 people, and so then you it, have a So you have a page of California Wines and Wineries, and then yeah. you have a personal page of Michael Kelly. Yeah, and they're kind of all jumbled up. I mean, I, I don't put anything personal on the wine site, but I do put personal things on my personal site, but I also put all the wine stories on my personal site. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And then and then when you do the Instagram, you can you can in fact you can is so one of them you can click and it will also go to Facebook and Twitter right. and everything mm -hmm. at the same time. So I don't I, I just I looked I didn't even know I, I apparently I mean I have a Twitter account. I never mm -hmm. I didn't even know I had the app on my phone. I don't even use it. <laughs> but it goes, I mean, every story gets posted to Twitter, but I never even look at it. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So, Deb, what about you? Are you are you active on Facebook or are you just posting to Facebook? Well, I'm active on Facebook. I'm, I'm active on all, all three that we talked about, Instagram, Twitter. Not so much Twitter. I kind of like, put a back seat on it. I, I don't want to say put a back seat on it, but I'm not as active as I was before. And I also see it like from the wine perspective and the interaction through Instagram than I do through anything else. I'm both on both the restaurant part and, and the wine part. Mm -hmm. But I, I continue to do both. And and I continue to do Twitter too because, you know, that's Quite honestly, Twitter is what brought me into the wine world. So I think we all um, recognize that social media can be good. Um, and the other thing is, we're all small people, right? We're all, you know, we're not these massive corporations that have people. You know, some people have social media that focus on Twitter, and then another person who focuses on Instagram. There's only 24 hours in a day, and we all mm -hmm. do other things other than whatever we're doing for social media. We have other jobs, or we have other things that require our time. So I think you have to divvy up 
where you are. So my last question before our riddle is, if you had to choose one social media avenue and you had to give up all the others, what would it be and why would you stick to that one? Okay. So Debbie, go ahead. Which one would you keep and which one, you know, why would you keep it? I'm going to go with my gut. My gut tells me to go with Instagram because there's a, a lot of functionality between that. There's the, you know, the stories, there's the live, and I get a lot of interaction on that, more so than I do with others. So that All right. Instagram it is. All right, Michael, what about you? If you had to pick one social media avenue, it's what would it be? Easy. Facebook, because yeah. Facebook is also a, uh, there are friends, there are people who have established themselves as following line. Uh, this is on the blog site, of the, either on the blog site or on my friend's, friend's site. But I'm assuming that my friends are not going to have eyes the size of cantaloupes and, and uh, brains the size of peas. I think my <laughs> friends are more intelligent than that. And so as a consequence, when you write something, they typically do respond. And Marie, I think I'm going to know your answer, but you may surprise me. Well, and I was just going to say, I think it's just coincidence the way that this is flowing through one, two, three people. I pick Twitter because I like Twitter. Oh. I like Twitter a lot. And the, re the main reason is the Twitter chats. I mean, there was a point where I would do like six Twitter chats every week. And I would be yeah. I, not because of Michael's reasoning with the pea brain, but I would have cantaloupe eyes by the time I was done with those Twitter chats because I'd be like, oh, my God. Like, I'm, like, amped up right now, and I don't know what to do. And, like, I mean, it's just the energy of it because you're going through and you're answering questions. And, like, there were a handful of them that I got to be, like, the main person. So I was answering questions. And it just, the interaction of it, for me, has always been the most on Twitter. I mean... I feel like the other ones, I post them, and then I'm like, eh, something might happen, something probably won't happen. But on Twitter, typically I get some sort of a response. And even if it isn't in the Twitter chat, like, I'll get, you know, a handful of likes or whatever. But, I mean, for me, hands down, that's the one I like. So I used to do all of those Twitter chats, too, but they seem to have, at least for me, they seem to have dwindled. There's just oh, not yeah. as many of them anymore. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so I, I enjoyed the Twitter chats. I loved the Twitter chats because it mm -hmm. was pu it was like talking to somebody exactly. there, you know, and it was fast. It was flow, you know, and honestly, right. the hour right. would go by and you'd be like, oh, but that was good. Like, it was cool. Right, right. Um, so I, I understand the Twitter chats. And if the Twitter chats were still as active as they were, I probably would pick Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. But... I I guess I've got to choose Instagram. I have to, I have to choose Instagram because that's where I get the most comments. That's where I get the most interaction. But on the other side, that's where I'm spending more time these days. So, right, mm -hmm. I'm spending more time thinking about my picture and thinking about my post I on Instagram. I don't know. Did you guys hear? My internet <laughs> might have just flaked. Oh. Okay, no. I just missed it. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, I just, you know, I just was saying that that's because I'm spending more time on Instagram. I'm spending more time thinking about those pictures and thinking about the posts that I'm writing. I'm spending almost an hour a day interacting with other people, so they're interacting with me. Now, if I did that on Twitter, maybe it'd be the same thing. Um, but... Mm -hmm. So I guess I got to go. But it is interesting. Yeah, different people, lay, you know, are finding their things. And I guess that's why there's so many different avenues out there for people. Right? Just like there's so many different wines, there's a wine for everybody. There's a social media for everybody. So, all right. I have a riddle, and it is a tough one. It is, <laughs> I, it is tough. It is tough. Okay, here we go. Ready? A man pushes his car to a hotel, only to find out that he is now bankrupt. What happened? Oh, play Monopoly. Oh, Michael, that's it. That was so fast. Good job, that's Michael. Awesome. Yay, Michael. Yeah. 
<laughs> you hey, dethroned I'm, Maria. Yeah. I'm one. I'm one for four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> you made that seem simple. Oh my gosh. That's awesome, Michael. Congratulations. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Hey, so I just have one last question for you, Lori, before you. Cause I know you want to wrap it up now, but my question is. How do we, how do we as writers make the social media work better for us? <laughs> Michael, if I had the answer, I would be, I would yeah. be selling a buttload of wine, and mm -hmm. be having thousands and thousands of you know followers on my channels. I think we gotta the world. I think we gotta focus on what works for each individual, like, as much as, you know, I said, you know, Instagram works for me, I do post on Facebook and Twitter and everything, but I think it's, it's focusing on where the conversation is at for you. I think, yes, you do have to do more than one, but focus on where the conversation is. Excellent that's advice. What, that's my Yep. Excellent advice. Focus on one and bring in the others. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So we'll go around the house, and I will give you one minute to uh, wrap things up for yourself and tell people where they can find you or anything new that is exciting in your life. So, again, Deb, you're, you're big in my, in my picture, so you can go first. So I'm Debbie G. Quindon. I'm the Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. You can find me at Hudson Valley Wine Goddess. Um, HB Wine Goddess on Twitter and Instagram, and um, I'm owner of Trio North Wildwood, and we're having a birds, uh, bubbles and birds dinner on December 9th. It's uh, five sparkling wines, and um, just go to our website, uh, trionorthwildwood.com, and you can probably also find it at HudsonValleyWineGoddess.com, and I'll leave the rest to you, Lori, and you can find Lori's wine at my restaurant. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And Maria? Uh, Maria Ferraro Beardsley, Wine and Cheese Friday. Um, my social media stuff is Wine and Cheese Fry or Wine and Cheese Friday, depending on which one you're on. Um, not a ton going on as far as up and coming things. I am wrapping up an entry that is uh, one that always takes me a long time to write. We get together with some family every year and do an enormous wine tasting. And this most recent one was nine wines and six cheeses. And I'm like still <laughs> typing like, okay, I can do this. Um, so that'll be our, our next post. Um, but yeah, uh, wineandcheesefriday.com. Okay. Thanks. Michael? Um, yeah. This, <clears throat> so for me, it's the website, californiawinesandwineries.com. I have a blog on Facebook, californiawinesandwineries.com, or, or blog on Facebook. And then the Cap Franc Celebration, this will be our third year of Cap Franc Celebration. It's going international this year. We've already received uh, entries from three, three different countries and 50, 50 wineries, and we've got wine tastings and appetizers one night, one evening, a wine judging one week. Lori is pouring Grustinia wines on Wednesday night, April uh, 6th, 2022, and on Thursday, we are having a winemaker's dinner with uh, Pam Starr, Steve Mirisu, and Lori Budd, and featuring their wines for this event. So we're going to have uh, uh, some, and it's, I, the tickets don't even go on sale until January, and I think we're already sold out. That's awesome. So, Congratulations. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. And I am Lori. Uh, we are going to be at the Gata Geese Festival this Saturday, but this blo this podcast isn't going to come out till after that. Um, so <laughs> the Gata Geese Festival is Saturday, and uh, we will be ho again hosting Saturday morning Paso Wine Pairing Weekend, and come find us on social media, whichever channel you like. We are there. Find us. Um, we are getting geared up for a Cab Franc Day, and we will be releasing our reserve on Cab Franc Day. 
So um, that is exciting for us. And I want to wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving. I'm sure there will be lots of wine on the table and cheese. And, <laughs> and rosé. Rosé. And rosé on every table but Michael's. Um, so <laughs> have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining me. And um, I am out of my glass, but slancha. Cheers. 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 Have a great Cheers. night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Good night. This has been another episode of Exploring the Wine Glass. Thanks for listening. If you have suggestions on what topics you would like me to discuss, please reach out on social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Exploring the Wine Glass. I am also on LinkedIn as Lori Hoytbud. Of course, you can always email me at exploringthewineglass at gmail.com. If you enjoyed what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe to help others find me more easily. And most importantly, tell your wine-loving friends, because if you like the podcast, they will too. Music is Wine by Kevens. Until next week, slancha. Give me the red, red wine. Give me the white, white wine.